will demonstrate how to update an existing HCLDX deployment using Helm. I currently have 9.5 CF200 and I will be updating this deployment to CF201. My deployment is running on OpenShift, but the steps I'll perform should be the same even if you're on a different Kubernetes platform. I'll also mention that this isn't just an out-of-the-box deployment, meaning I've transferred the portal databases from Derby to DB2 and I've added an external LDAP and changed the WAS and portal administrator users. As you can see, in my dx-helm namespace, I have a full deployment with two core replicas. The only application I don't have enabled is OpenLDAP since this environment is configured with an external LDAP. So here's the product documentation with the steps to update an existing deployment. Please see the video description below for a link to the documentation. Now to simplify this, I've written out the steps here. And although I don't explicitly say it here, taking the appropriate backups before doing anything is always recommended. The first step is to download the new CF201 container images and charts. I won't go into that in this video since I've already covered this topic. If you need help with this, please check the video description below for a link to my video on downloading HCLDX software. The next step is to upload the images to the private repository that your Kubernetes cluster can access. Now for this step, depending on your cloud provider and the type of registry you're using, these steps may vary. In my case, I'm using a private Docker repository and I've covered this topic in a different video, so again, I won't cover that here. Please see the video description below if you want to review that video. However, I'll quickly show you the image name and tags I have from my private repository. With the new images ready to go, the next step is to create my custom-values.yaml file that I'll use for the upgrade. Included with the CF201 images are the Helm charts. I have the package here, and as you can see, here's the values.yaml that you need to copy. I have already created a copy and named it custom-values-201.yaml, and you can see it here. Now, before making any modifications to this new file, I will verify I have a good copy of my current custom-values.yaml file. Now, this isn't a requirement, but it's one of my best practices, so I know I'm working with a valid YAML file for my deployment. A quick way to verify is to use the Helm upgrade command on my deployment and make sure I get no errors and I see no changes on any of my pods. So I'll run that here using my custom-values-200.yaml file and I'll make sure to point it to the CF200 Helm charts. And no errors. And nothing changed in terms of my pods, so it all looks good. Now you can also use the Helm get values command and manually compare with your existing YAML file, um, but running Helm upgrade with the old file is just faster for me. With that verified, I'll copy over all my modified values from my CF200 to my CF201 YAML file. There are two special notes in here for the CF201 YAML file. First, for the core startup probe, you need to ensure that you have a high enough value for the upgrade to complete. If you're familiar with applying a CF on, in an on-prem portal environment, the process is similar in containers, meaning in the background, the apply CF task will be run to update the portal profile. So we don't want the startup probe to kill the core pod while the task is running. The default value is set to 4320, which equates to 12 hours, which should be more than enough. You should make sure to keep this value high enough when you perform your upgrade. The other note I have here is regarding the WAS and portal administrator user and password. If you changed your WAS or portal administrator user, you will need to make sure you update the user and password in the security section. These credentials are used to update the secrets in the DX deployment, and the credentials in the secrets are used to run the apply CF task. So if you have an incorrect administrator user and password, the apply CF task will not run successfully. With those two notes mentioned, 
Let's take a look at my custom-values.yaml file. Now for the purpose of time, I've already copied and updated my CF201 YAML file, but I'll highlight all the changes I've made. First, we start with the images. I've updated the repository and the image name and tags with my CF201 images. Now remember, my custom-values-201.yaml file is a copy of the values.yaml from the CF201 Helm Charts package. You don't just want to copy your old CF200 custom-values.yaml file and use it in CF201. The reason you don't want to do this is because there may be additions or deletions in the CF you're updating to. For example, we can see right here that the Postgres or persistence image and tags have been removed in CF201. Next, I'll move down to the scaling section. Since this is a test environment, I have all my applications set to one replica, except the core, which I have set to two. In the previous operator-based DX deployment, you were asked to reduce the replicas of core to one when performing an update. In Helm-based deployments, however, this is no longer required. Next, we have the all important persistent volumes. Note, like the image and tags, the volume for the persistence pod has been removed in CF201. You cannot make any changes to the volumes with Helm upgrade, so you should match all your previous values. To demonstrate what you will see if you try to make a change, I'll intentionally set the core volume name to an invalid value. In the application section, I have all the applications enabled except OpenLDAP. In the networking section, I have my hosts and the core's origin URLs for all the different applications. In the security section, I have updated the WAS and the portal administrator user with my current credentials. And finally, in my probe section, I can verify that the startup probe is set to 12 hours. Now you may notice a difference in the liveness and readiness probes, but that's okay. These probes don't come into play when doing an upgrade. If you need more details on understanding probes, please review the official Kubernetes documentation and the video in the description below where I discuss probes. These are the only modifications that I made to my custom-values.yaml file, but if you made any additional ones, you need to carry them over. The last thing I need to do before performing a Helm upgrade is to make sure the DB user and password is up to date in the wkplc underscore db domain that properties file. This action is only required if you've performed a database transfer. Now, as you can see, I have a local copy of this file and I've already updated my DB user and password for all of the portal databases. Now my WP underscore profile persistent volume is on an NFS server, so I can SFTP and locate the file under the profile config engine properties directory. If you can access your persistent volume file system directly, you will have to bash into the core pod and update the file under the op hcl WP underscore profile config engine properties directory.
And to show that I can do this on any Kubernetes platform, I'll demonstrate using the kubectl command. Okay, so now that I've updated my properties file and I have my new custom-values.yaml file, I'm ready to perform the Helm upgrade. Let me copy over my custom-values.yaml file over to my OpenShift machine. Now I'll run the up Helm upgrade passing in my namespace, my CF201 custom-values file, my deployment name, and then make sure I point it to the CF201 Helm charts. And I get an error, but that's okay. Remember, I intentionally put a different volume name so we can see what an error will look like if you try to change a value in custom-values file that isn't allowed with Helm upgrade. In this case, I can easily cor correct the persistent volume name and rerun the Helm upgrade. And that looks better. So after running Helm Upgrade, you'll see a flurry of activities for all the pods. As you can see, every single pod is being terminated and recreated using the new CF201 image. Again, we can see the same using kubectl command. For the core pod, since we have two replicas, only one replica will be terminated and recreated initially. Once the core pod is recreated using the CF201 image, you can monitor the core logs for progress. As you can see, the startup script detected that we're updating to a new version. So the first thing we'll do is copy the existing profile. Again, we can see the logs using the kubectl command. If I check the file system of my persistent volume, I can see a new CF201 directory has been created and the copy is going. If you're curious about the details, when you upgrade the core application to a higher CF, a copy of the profile is first made and then apply CF is run by one of the core replica pods using the new copy of the profile. The other core replicas continue running using the current profile directory while apply CF is running. So if you have two or more replicas like I do, you can continue accessing portal while the upgrade is going. However, you do need to be aware that these replicas are all still pointing to the same backend database in case any database schemas are made during the upgrade. Going back to the core logs, I can see the copy is complete and the apply CF task has now kicked off. Now, I've edited out the apply CF time on this video, but at this point, you should just wait and monitor the core pod until the task is complete and the pod is marked ready. Once the core pod is marked ready, if you have any additional core replicas, the next replica will be terminated and rec recreated using the CF201 image. When the pod gets recreated, it will be updated to point to the new profile which has already been upgraded, so the pod won't have to run apply CF again. At this point, I can verify in the portal administration page that it shows CF201 correctly.
and if you want to be really thorough, you can check the config trace.log to make sure the apply CF task completed successfully. And it did. In my case, it took 91 minutes to run. And finally, I'll confirm the additional applications like Content Composer, Design Studio, and Digital Asset Manager are all working correctly after the upgrade.